Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in sunny San Diego. If you're looking for Vespa parts for accessories for your modern or vintage Vespa, ScooterWest.com, we got you covered. It's our web store. Uh, if you're in the San Diego area, consider checking out our dealership. Today, I'm gonna show you pretty much just a three-in-one video. How to upgrade the looks of your scooter. As you can see, we have these wonderful looking black uh, belt covers to replace these kind of dated looking silver parts. Um, and the most important practical mod modification you can do to your Vespa GTS HPE. So in North America, 2020 and newer Vespa GTS 300 is replace the standard oil pan that has no filler or any sort of measurement for checking your oil level with one of these wonderful oil pans that has a built-in sight glass. So let me go on to talk about this, this product right here. The oil pan with the sight glass comes in both uh, standard aluminum if that's your look or you can upgrade to the black powder coated version. So if you've owned your GTS 300 HPE pretty much in Europe, it's a 2019 and newer model. Uh, in North America, 2020 and newer. The downside of this newer motor, if you haven't already figured out, they do consume more oil than the typical older GTS 300. The older generation GTS 300, I've found you can go about 3,000 miles of mild highway speeds uh, without needing to top off the oil. Well, if you run one of these on the highway, you definitely wanna be checking that oil every 500 to 1,000 miles and topping off if needed. And that's just a normal operation of the motor. Uh, the same goes for if you have a, a Melosi or Polini kit installed on your engine, they typically use more oil. So they pretty much boosted the output of the motor, which is a great thing. Overall, the motor is more reliable and it's just a better designed motor with the one downside that they do consume a bit of oil. I've had some customers that are already on their 12,000 mile services and they do report to me that they do occasionally need to top off the oil. And I've had some customers never check their oil and show up for a first service and we find their oil levels down a half a liter which is kind of a dangerous level and if you know about the hpe scooters they have the dipstick located on the right side of the scooter and it's a much more difficult to uh, gain access to this dipstick versus the older design where it was on the left side where the belt cover is well fortunately uh, this this oil pan that's made by Peter in Germany kind of solves that solution for easily checking your oil. You just pretty much put the scooter up on the center stand and like many, many motorcycles, it's got a high quality sight glass in there with a window. So you can visually look at the level of your oil and also see the color and condition of the oil. I think it's a great thing. I can tell you one thing, Vespa did have this back in 1996 on the original Vespa ET4, they did have a sight glass. And obviously it's an added cost to the manufacturing and they just figure the dipstick's good enough. But fortunately the aftermarket's got you covered for this. So the perfect time to put a product like this on your Vespa GTS 300 HPE would be during the first service, you know, around 625 miles, 1000 kilometers. Uh, these are available in the powder coated black finish or just the natural aluminum finish. Natural aluminum finish uh, is a little bit cheaper. Here in North America, we sell these on our web store, scooterwest.com. If you're looking for the part number, it's just the OEM part number for the standard oil pan, but with the suffix of SG. So 875-908-VK-SG for sight glass. Um, if you're in other parts of the world, such as Europe, of course, SIP or Scooter Center also carries Peter's products that he custom machines to very high quality. This starts out as an original die cast Piaggio oil pan and it's just modified for the sight glass. So a quick rundown of the tools needed to do this job. Uh, everything you need to do an oil change and dismantle the belt cover essentially. So an eight millimeter socket, I have it both in quarter inch drive and three eighths drive to use with this torque wrench various extensions, the dismantle that center clutch nut, you're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket and a torque wrench that goes to the higher torques, you know, one that's, you know, 10 to 100 uh, 
foot-pounds. I'm using a lower torque wrench that's zero to 10 foot-pounds for the, um, or 10 to 25 for the smaller fasteners, so various uh, wrenches. Uh, need a 24 millimeter combination wrench or a large 24 millimeter socket, get that oil drain off. A needle nose is handy. I also used a wobble in order to do this job for the quarter inch drive. It isn't necessary, but it's helpful. And the most important tool that's not a standard tool is the tool ETC-IA, which is the clutch center net holder. You wanna have this on hand anyways when it comes time to do your belt job. So since you're pulling off the oil pan, you're gonna need an oil pan gasket. Typically these gaskets aren't intended to be reused. Part number on scooterwest.com is 846098. Uh, you're going to need all the materials to do an oil change, such as the oil filter, the O-ring, the 285, 3, 385 or something. I think I got that wrong. I don't have, have it in my memory. But again, look in the description of the video. So oil filter, the oil drain O-ring. Uh, good to have two quarts of the fully synthetic 5W40. Uh, we have several brands available at ScooterWest.com. Castrol is the original equipment oil for the modern Vespa, so we have that available. Uh, along with the tools to dismantle the, the belt cover, I would call this like an intermediate job. It's not like a full engine rebuild, but it's not a simple, just basic oil change. You're getting into the motor a little bit and there's some critical parts that we'll be touching. So first step is you're gonna need to drain the engine oil. I already have the dipstick out, which is located right here. If you're not familiar, definitely wanna be familiar with where the dipstick is if you own one of these scooters. Um, the oil drains, the 24 millimeter, you can use a combination wrench such as this, uh, or a socket. Can't be too large of a socket because it's kind of limited clearance. Get that in there and, and it's going to take a little bit of force to break it free, but this wrench is pretty good. So go ahead and break that free. Have your oil pan ready. And right here, it's just the bread tin, but we also have the the scooter oil pan as well. And I have that part number in the description. All the tools I use, I'll put those in the description of this video. And just go ahead and pull the oil drain off. Uh, this being a new scooter is pretty clean, new oil. I see the O-ring in there. Uh, if you're doing the first service, I certainly replace this. If it's a brand new scooter, uh, hasn't been heated up too much, the O-ring's probably in good shape. But anytime you do a service, I would definitely recommend changing that O-ring. And along with the O-ring, if you're doing an oil change, I've covered this in the past with oil change videos and service videos, you got your oil strainer. And even on a brand new bike that's only been started and run for five minute, miles, you'll even already find some little particles. Actually, it's grease. That's probably the grease when they assemble the motor. But uh, not unusual at all on the first service to find some little particles, but let it go ahead and drain and we'll put the scooter up on the center stand. So we're back on the left side of the scooter now that the oil's drained out. Uh, makes the job a lot easier if you do remove these side skirts. Um, you might wanna watch some of my past videos of dismantling the bodywork. It's quite a bit of work on these HPEs. You gotta take off the tail light, license frame, before you could take these uh, side skirts off. But you could fortunately still do this complete job without taking these off. It's just a little bit more difficult. Uh, we're gonna loosen the air box. We're gonna remove this black cover here. Uh, there are two screws that hold this black cover on, uh, eight millimeter, and I'd recommend having a quarter inch drive. I'm going to speed this up and use a, an electric screwdriver to get some of these off, but just a standard quarter inch drive, eight millimeter socket. Kind of funny. You call it quarter inch drive, but it's eight millimeters. Like all over the world, that's the standard. They use quarter, three eighths. So they use a so that pretty much is the two screws. You might keep the screws together with it. Uh, they are different lengths. So set that aside. Next, we'll go ahead and loosen the air box. I'll take a T30 Torx. There is three screws that hold the air box. There's one way up in here in the back, but you typically don't need to mess with that one. And they have a pair of washers. So set those aside. At this point, you can lift the air box just enough. It's still attached, but lift it enough that you can uh, get clearance. Back to your eight millimeter socket here.
And one more. And you also have this little guy drop. And just a little tip so you don't accidentally put the screws back in. You can put like a little X near each of these holes just so you remember not to put a screw back into those holes when you get this aluminum belt cover off. Next, I recommend having the clutch holding tool. The Scooter West part number is tool ETC-IA. You have these always available, so go ahead and put that into the, the pegs right there and take a 19 millimeter socket, hopefully on a longer ratchet right here. Spin the nut off. It's gonna be a single washer. It's a good idea just to take it off because if you pull the belt cover off, it's just gonna go end up on the ground inevitably. So next, we'll just go ahead and remove the remaining fasteners for this belt cover. So I'll start with the one down here. There's gonna be another pair of brackets. It holds both this uh, breather hose for the, the transmission and also another hose for the, the, the brake hose. And this last one, without the skirt removed, it's a little bit tricky to gain access. So I suggest having a wobble on hand. And you gotta be careful using a wobble in a power driver such as this. You know, it kind of wants to wobble around a lot on you. And you can't really see this single fastener up here. There's also a ground wire on that too, so. So all seven of these fasteners are, or six of them are gonna be the same length. That one that's on the top with the ground lead that you can see it's hanging right here. Make sure you reconnect that because you can burn up your wiring harness uh, when you go to start the scooter if this ground strap's not connected. Uh, that's held by this longer screw. And with the new scooter, this should just come right off. So let's see if we have good luck here. Yeah. And if you have difficulty removing this cover, these little ears right here, here, and even right here and up here, you could use a little slide hammer or you could tap them with a hammer from behind. But being a brand new scooter, they all come off with, with ease. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this oil pan right here. Uh, it's gonna have a little bit more oil drain. Unfortunately, typically on the center stand, I do have the scooter up on the center stand. Uh, alternatively, you could put rags or paper towels to kind of keep it off, or you can just wipe it off the center stand. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, you're gonna have, I think it's seven fasteners that hold the oil pan to the engine. Again, the eight millimeter socket will do the trick, quarter inch drive. And typically with something like this, I just go ahead and crack them all free. So, and again, this one in the lower front part of the oil pan holds a, has a bracket that holds the brake line. So, so they're all loose now. And keep these separate. They are actually the same length as the, the belt cover screws, but they're a little bit different style, so. And there's that extra oil that's gonna come out. A little more than I expected. Um, if you wanna get the most amount of oil out of the scooter, I would suggest just tipping it over to the right. I was kinda in a hurry to drain the oil. So you're gonna have some excess capacity drain out of the engine, so. And before you put this away, don't bother reusing that gasket, but you do wanna save two of these or just three dowels, so one back there. Sometimes they're part of the cover, sometimes they're on the engine case, such as this one. They're all the same. So in three locations, you got the three dowels. So if you like, you could sop up the last remaining oil that's in the bottom of the oil pan. Just I would suggest using disposable rags, such as these blue towels. And you're probably wondering, what, what's underneath this cover? Well, I'm not gonna dismantle it any further because I don't need to, but underneath this little uh, windage tray right here is a, another chain, a little chain that pretty much powers the oil pump. They have a, a small 
oil pump on here and it draws from the bottom of the engine case. And right here is a very critical part of the Vespa GTS motor. This is the oil pressure relief valve. And you can see there's more oil behind it. Uh, don't really wanna mess with it. Don't wanna get any dirt on it. It's gonna have that calibrated spring in the piston. We'll put that right back in place. And um, don't worry if it's still dripping a little oil. It's not gonna hurt the gasket when you put the oil pan on. Uh, if you're just a neat freak, want to drain it off, of course you can let it sit overnight and drain every last drop out of the, the engine. No problem there, or even tip the whole motor or scooter to the right so it's just not, you know, having this annoying drip. But I'm trying to get through this video nice and quick. So we're going to put the dowels back in place. The gaskets that are for these oil pans are already treated. They have a special layer of like a silicone on them. So that's why they're one time use and they seal very well. So there's no problems with them. I never really see issues with them, um, except for sometimes when you have a Polini belt uh, that will catch the, it will rub on the gasket and kind of tear up the gasket. But that's not talking about that with this video. I'm just leaving the transmission stock for this scooter here. So put the gasket on there. And before you put the oil pan on, you want to have a couple more rags and a brake parts cleaner. So before you put this on, sometimes there's residue from the powder coating process because they do sandblast these or bead blast them. So you only need a small amount of um, something like a brake parts cleaner works perfect. You know, any type of light solvent and just take a disposable rag and just wipe the inside of these pans out just to get rid of any of that remaining residue from the the powder coating or machining process. If there's a tiny bit in there, that's what the oil filter is for. Uh, just don't want to have an excess amount. So the gasket surface has all been prepared. There's very little of the powder coating on there. You may see a, a tiny bit. Um, you can put your finger over it. You can just take a, if there's any little burrs of powder coating, you can just take a knife and kind of just deburr it, no problem there. And same with the, the holes where the screws go. And one thing you gotta keep in mind with powder coated parts is you do get a little bit of creep of the material. Um, so you do wanna take extra care when you put the screws in. I would suggest going back in there and checking the torque of these screws after a couple hundred miles of operation. So pretty much the oil pan just goes on just like the original one came off. Align it with those, uh, the dowels. And there's also the oil pressure relief thing. There's a boss for it that it lines up with. And just kind of eyeball it, make sure it's all straight. You don't want that spring getting out of position. And I'll start with just two screws and get them started because you have the spring tension of that oil pressure relief. And we'll put two screws in just to hold it in place. Make sure the gasket doesn't get pinched. If you have an oil leak, um, you may have made a mistake and have, you know, pinched the gasket. So, and we have this one with the bracket here. If you really want to nerd out, you could probably paint all those brackets or even get them powder coated if you want everything black. So I have this set on a very low torque. I'm going to come back and torque all these. Again, all the same length, no issues here. And another tip, don't put a screw here. That's, that's for the, the belt cover. So I have a torque wrench set up for a lower torque and it's set to about seven and a half foot pounds or 10 Newton meters. Uh, pretty critical that you torque these in a crisscross pattern and get them all pretty even. And like I said, with the powder coated version, I highly recommend coming back and retorquing all these at a later time after a few hundred miles. So I'm just going right up to four foot pounds on the first round, kind of watching the digital display. It's a little bit easier with a digital one like this, but you don't necessarily need something this trick. Just a torque wrench that is capable of going to the lower torques. Okay, we'll go to the final torque. So do those pair, move to this fastener. 
crisscross. And the last one. So we'll go ahead and put the belt cover back in place. This is the inner aluminum belt cover. And it's got the dowels that line up with the front and the rear of the engine. And just as a reminder, take the longest screw from the belt cover. We'll put the ground, ground strap. And also there's the, the holder for the, the coolant line. So there's two things that this bolt goes right through. And if you look at my, if you want to see details of this, I think the 6,000 mile, 10,000 kilometer video for the HPE Vespa kind of, I have the skirts off, so you could definitely see what's going on a lot easier. Let's get that one started and don't put one there. I almost did that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and put all the screws back in place. The two brackets here, one bracket here, and there's no screw that goes there. And up here and back there. So all the screws are in place. No screw here, no screw here. Don't worry about that hole in the center. And we're going to go ahead and do our first round. These aren't as critical. Again, it would be similar uh, torque, about seven and a half foot pounds or 10 newton meters if you do want to use your torque wrench. So next we'll put the center clutch nut on, use the holder tool, you got your washer and the nut, 45 foot pounds. So we'll tighten this right up to about 45 foot pounds. There we go. So you start with the rearmost, you know, the rear section of the belt cover. You have this bracket right here that fits up in that position. And the shortest screw goes towards the front right here. And just holding the belt cover in place as we get all these started. And that one started and the last one. Sometimes you got to move the belt cover around a little bit is plastic. So kind of get it lined up with everything, the aluminum cover. And again, same torque. They do have metal inserts in here, so you're not gonna crack the plastic. And next we'll put this little cover back on. So you have the, the pair of screws, the goof, goof up that robot did right here where you leave that screw out. Again, the shorter screw goes on the bottom, the longer screw goes on top. There's a foam air filter in here, and if you have miles on your scooter, it's definitely worth checking that out and cleaning it. Of course, if you do the service, like a 6,000 mile service, uh, you do want to go in there and clean that out. So uh, get your two screws back in place for your air box. And I don't recommend tighten them all the way. Make sure they, they catch. So it's pretty handy. You have a spray cleaner, you know, part number spray cleaner on scooterwest.com, original bike spirits. It kind of works for everything on your scooter. Give it a little mist, get all your greasy fingerprints off those shiny new parts you got and shine them all up and don't get too excited we gotta get oil back in this beauty so i'm not going to show all the steps of doing an oil change um, if you're doing an oil change of course you want to replace the filter if it's a brand new bike probably just get away with um, leaving the oil filter on there but anytime you do an oil change on these scooters they do recommend changing the filter got the dipstick out already unthreaded um, you know if the muffler is hot this is always just quite a bit of a PETA to check the oil level on these. Um, it's gonna take more than a normal capacity since we pulled the oil pan off and you certainly aren't gonna easily pour something like this into that scooter. Alternatively, you could use a big, huge syringe. They do make big oil syringes and put that in. Uh, here in my workshop, I have a electronic um, oil pump that meters exactly what I want, the, the quantity I want from a 55 gallon drum. It's not something that any home mechanic would probably ever have. But second best, if you're using bottles, you could get one of these Redline funnels. I think part number is Tool Funnel on the Scooter West website. And you can heat up the tip. I showed that in another video that kind of re reprofile the tip. Um, 
to make it where it works really good. This one hasn't been really reprofiled, but, and you just want to slowly pour the oil back in. Start with, uh, I would start with like one and a quarter of these, and that should bring it up to a safe capacity. And it's going to need probably a little bit more depending on how much drained out. This isn't a tool that we have available on scooterwest.com, but they do make extra large syringes, uh, specifically for filling like a differential or transmission on a car, uh, would do the same, same thing. Obviously it's gonna take several syringe fills to uh, fill this up to capacity. So I slowly added oil until it came up in the window. And the full mark on a dipstick when the scooter's on a center stand, so it's right at the full mark. So this is your full mark. That's your low mark, uh, would be right halfway in the sight glass. So the idea of a sight glass is a good idea to see the air bubble and your oil, and you can see the line very easily. And the nice thing is if you look deeper into the sight glass, you can see that aluminum um, grate back there or screen that kind of gives you good contrast, especially when the oil is very dirty. Uh, you'll be able to see that aluminum uh, plate back there. So essentially, if you see no oil in the window, you're approximately about 250 milliliters, about a quarter of a quart low on oil. So that's when it's ideal to top off your oil. Um, you don't want to ever have it overflowed where this whole entire window is solid with oil. That's too much. Of course, I'm going to start this motor for the first time. It's going to go a little bit lower because it's going to repressurize the system, including the oil filter. Then I'll let it settle and then I'll just make sure my oil level's right in that halfway mark. So we're gonna go ahead and start the scooter and let it run for a while, and also verify that the oil light, the oil pressure light goes out. So you can watch the window and see what happens. I can't see what's going on, but the camera can. So I'm gonna start it. Oil light goes out right, right away, so that's a good thing, got pressurized. I'll let it idle for, I don't know, 20 more seconds and then we'll let it settle and watch the oil level come up to the correct level. And I suspect it's gonna be a little bit down from what it was before I started the motor. So now that the scooter's settled, it's just starting to show up in the window. I think I'll add about 150 or 200 milliliters of oil and it should be right up to the correct level. So congratulations, you just got through the whole process of not just putting any old oil pan on, putting an upgraded oil pan on your scooter, along with some visual additions like the belt cover and such. If you're on a budget and you're just looking for the bling factor of having black, we do sell the standard oil pan in powder coated black finish as well. The same part number, just type the Piaggio part number that's in the description and you'll see the various combinations, whether you get the one with the sight glass, it's custom for the Vespa GTS 300 HPE. Uh, this doesn't, this specific pan does not work on the prior generation uh, GTSs. It's definitely a worthwhile upgrade for the HPE because there's so much more difficult to check your oil with that dipstick that's right above the muffler and the added oil consumption. Um, and I wouldn't call that a problem. People have asked me about that. Certain engines, especially higher test engines, uh, typically consume oil. Like I can tell you if you owned a Porsche, you probably expect it to consume oil and that's pretty standard for a flat six engine, you know, that style of engine. If you own a Toyota Corolla, you probably don't expect to even open the hood between oil changes. So with these new higher test HPE motors, that's just one of the extras that you do need to maintain is maintain your oil level. And this sight glass definitely makes it a nice easy task just to give you a good easy visual indication of where your oil level is. And again, you gotta let the scooter settle on the center stand on level surface in order to get an accurate reading with a sight glass. If you're uh, using the side stand or on an incline or even with it off the center stand, you're not gonna get a fully accurate indication. Um, again, just like I did, I verified it with the dipstick. You know, the dipstick was engineered by the people who made the engine, so you know that's correct. And if you can verify that, then you can reference it to the sight glass. Thanks again for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West here in San Diego, California. Um, 
If this is the first time on my channel, consider subscribing. Vespa Motorsport is our channel. Uh, over 85,000 subscribers. I want to thank every subscriber, everybody that watches all the videos, um, for watching my videos. And the way you promote us is just, you know, hit thumbs up on the video. Or if you're in North America, consider supporting us by purchasing from our web store, scooterwest.com. Or if you're in San Diego, maybe you want to stop by our dealership. We have a wonderful dealership full of wonderful new scooters, along with a world-renowned service center that works on all ages of Vespas. Thanks again for watching. Robot here.